Hey folks, Corey here. It's been a minute since I made a video. I've been kind of busy, uh, but today I'm going to just kind of run you through what I have going on, and then we'll probably get in high just to kind of show you some things that's been going on. Uh, pretty busy, pretty busy. As you can see, there's hives everywhere. <laughs> and this is only one spot, so I guess we'll walk through, and I will show you just kind of what the, the, how they're working on the front, and they've been pretty busy. But, uh, let me set you down real quick. Alright, so, this is the activity that I got going on all the time. I need to get out here with the weed again. Um, all my bees are just flowing so much honey in it this year. It's been uh, hard to keep up with it. Um, I've had a couple that actually got honey bound this year, which I've never had like uh, crazy. Uh, this one's going to need pulled again. Every one of these supers, honey supers on top, are full on every one of these boxes. Um, just got to get in there and get it. <laughs> I've just been on top of it constantly trying to rotate honey and boxes out. And then uh, a lot of these are all new bees this year too. Um, top bars are really moving. Man oh man. Sorry, girls, I need to get out here and take care of this. Don't attack me. These are a little bit on rear. This side of my bees are. But I got them all the way around. I go all the way around. <laughs> Over there, too. I need to get out here and do some trimming. And this guy, I have my observation top bar. I don't know if you can see anything in here. We'll probably get in there and check it out. Yeah, there's some cone. You can see them all laid up in there. See some bees crawling on the end there. Oh, goodness. Let's see how the entrance is doing now. Hey, girls. Alright, so this is this side. Um, I got a probably half as many in my other yard. We're going to go out there and do some stuff today. Make take you through the hive. Checking all these girls. My goodness. I'm bringing in that yellow pollen. Good. Okay. Alright folks. So I'll be back here in a second. Well, here we are. Hopefully my camera batteries last. Might have to replace them. Um, yeah, every one of these boxes is full. Need to get in them and check some of these. And that's what we're going to do today. Going to check one or two of them for you. You guys can get a glimpse of all my bees and how they're working. All buck fast, Gene. All right, folks. I shall return. All right, folks. So this is uh, one of my boxes I wanted to showcase. Uh, this is the ones that I'm doing uh, two boxes of the normal deeps back instead of up. Um, so there's basically we would t take two of those and stick them side by side kind of like they are, and have the entrance on the opposite end, um, and laying like this, and so like this. The reason I did this is so I can do back and forth between 19 inch top bars, and I got to be attacking the camera. They don't like the camera, never. Um, anyway, so I have these top bars here. Um, that way I can switch them over if I have to, or transfer cone, or so on and so forth. Also, it gives them a version of, if I wanted to go all bars or all top bars, half and half, I have the opportunity to go between these and my top bar hives. Um, now, this was a new queen I raised this year out of, off the original Buckfast Queen. Uh, as you can see, they're doing pretty well. I got one bee that's aggravating pee out of me. Um, most of this is honey through here. They're only probably working about five frames of brood right now, which is fine to come in in the fall, uh, rather than fill the rest of it up with honey anyway. So today we're going to just pop a few frames out give you a show. Hopefully my camera doesn't die. It is blinking. 
so just hang on with me here. And I'll continue to hope that it's fucking record. Alright, hive tool. Now let's hope that they're going to be friendly today because I'm a crazy beekeeper and I like to beekeep in shorts and sandals and flip flops and all that nonsense because, you know, this is how I roll when I beekeep. Usually I don't even have a mask on, but today I don't feel like being stung in the face, so. And I usually would step my camera on my head, but I'm trying to pay attention to make sure it don't die on me. Alright, now I'll give you a glimpse of the inner works of the hive here. Let's just see where they're at. Now, I should be right around 40 hives, I believe, now. Uh, a little too many than I'd like to have, really, for one person. Uh, now, this frame here that I'm about to pull out was actually when I had to introduce this hive because they got honey-bound, and I had to give them some kind of empty cone. So I gave them this old frame of cone here to let, them fill, let her fill out with egg or brood because... Like I said, they were bringing so much honey in, which they still are, but not as much as they were, that I was getting honey bound in a lot of my hives. So, this is the one I threw in there, and they completely started filling this back up. Okay, ain't really working. Just filling her up. Not getting there. That's good. They have space, though. That's what I want. Um, now, this one, as you can see, this is an example of your hive getting too warm, especially if you don't use foundation. It, where it broke off and it fell. But you can see where they're trying to repair it. So what we'll do is we'll skip two frames so I don't break that and it falls at the bottom of the hive. Um, it does happen sometimes. Uh, it's the only bad thought side, not using foundation and stuff like that. It's letting them draw out naturally. You can't have that happen. It happens very rarely, but it does happen. I just take these out as two now. See how that's all just, just formed? Not looking good. Oh, I see something over here, though. And I'm going to check out if the queen cells are queen cups. Right there's a queen cup, but that doesn't look like it's being extended. It shouldn't. She shouldn't go anywhere because this is already been swarmed out. I've already split them. I mean, I've done all that, so they shouldn't go anywhere unless they get honey bound again, maybe. But they still got room. Okay, camera's still going pretty strong. That's good. I don't know how long we're going to get out of it. i go until we can't anymore. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to turn this. Hopefully I can get you before it goes out. Put you up here for a second so you can see what I'm saying. Alright, so there's some brew pattern. Honey on the side. They got that pulled out all the way. A little bit of drone. Um... I was hoping there wasn't going to be any drone left. I was hoping they would start pulling them away. This is where the brood is starting. Honey up top looks good. Perfect. Where do you want to see it? It's a little patchy. This is the first queen, though, so her first year. So I will expect that hopefully to get better. Now the next one looks a lot better with brood. Um, which looks like they're catching the brood up with what honey they had, which is... Which is fine, I just hope they don't go anymore, because they have a good amount of honey. They've kind of dropped it down since they are raising more babies now. As you can tell, all the ones are coming out over here. Now, I've seen queen cups, but I don't think they have anything in them, and I really don't think she would swarm this late of the year, being a new queen. Like I said, unless uncircumstances being they get too crowded, uh, something like that. And uh, I can see that this basically continues the same way all the way through. Honey, brew, pollen. Honey, brew, pollen. So, as of that, I don't really need to go any further. I don't, I just wanted to make sure that uh, she was doing what she was doing. She's been in here about a couple weeks now, so I would hope that she's, or, well, she's been laying and babies for about a couple weeks now. 
um, push this all back. Now, I hope if anybody's interested in this uh, design that I have, or how I did it, uh, just, you know, post in the comments or something. And I'll, if anything, get to, if I get enough people asking about it, I'll give uh, start giving out the uh, dimensions and the measurements to it. I absolutely enjoy having the box laid like this. The reason being is a couple reasons. Uh, for some reason, they seem to winter better when the cone's laying like this. And I can tell you this because out of experience, in my top bars, they lay like that. Okay? And all my top bars, well, I only lose maybe, if I lose any out of my top bars, I lose a lot less than I do out of boxes. And there could be a couple reasons. You know, on your boxes, you have you know, layers of things that have to seal for the winter, you know, uh, constant, whatever you're stacking on them. With this, it's continuous. It's not, this is not have to split here where another box would be. And if also, if I needed to be, if I needed to add supers and stuff, I can set a super here. Um, I could set, like those, like these supers, side by side right here, and I can literally stack, 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 if I have to. And it's only going to be half the height of what it would normally be if you had them like this. And they're not so top heavy. And like I said, also, I, it works with the top bars I have. You know, being 19 inches long and an inch and a half, I think it's inch and a half or inch and a quarter wide. Uh, these are inch, one by twos is what they are um, with the, little, the uh, strip on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, these work also with my top bars. So if I have to, if I for some reason have a back order on these and I can't get them, I can go over to my top bars and they won't be, you know, they won't be without frames or space. Um, I can also do that if I really have to with the top, uh, the supers up top. I just have to have a solid bottom when I do that so they don't build all the way down. Um, another thing is, uh, so there's a couple of reasons. I've had them winterized. I've never lost a hive in this type that I've built and started doing. I've never lost hive in the winter. Um, never lost them to pest um, or anything like that. Now, I will reduce all their entrance, all their hives before the uh, winter gets here, this will probably have a divider in the back if they don't move further back, which I only expect them maybe to go a couple more frames uh, this year if they do it all. They could surprise me, which they usually do um, in the good way. They've got a lot of number of bees, so if there's still anything to forage, they're going to find it. Um, now, this one here, give me a second here, is actually the second version on legs that I built because the original one I didn't have legs on. And as you can see, I shingle all my roofs. Everything gets nice and shingles, and oh yeah, I make sure my bees are good. They don't get no moisture if I can. Uh, the original version was this one over here. This is my original first one. The only thing about that is, is it's shorter. I didn't, I didn't figure having two of these together here. I only just made a long one and just kind of fitted what frames I decided to put in there. But my second versions are like if you would take two of these just like this and put them together without the walls in between and they came out the entrance over here. Uh, and it keeps me from going up so high. Uh, I, I mean it's not like I'm old or anything but I don't want to be working eight box high highs especially with my buck fast. They produce so much that, as you can tell, this red box here, this bee, is, believe it or not, was one I raised this year. And I can't, I have to keep stacking boxes on them. I'll have to come up and take this box off, because I know it's full probably already, of honey. I have to pull it off and put another one on. And that's all I do, is just constantly rotate boxes out, because um, if I keep them good too high, then they're just hard to work. They're extremely hard to work. Um, I will, if I have to, obviously. But, uh... Man, I'll tell you what, all these boxes right here are probably going to need a Super 2 the way they're looking. Um, but yes, it's it's amazing. These bees, I love these bees. I highly recommend them if you can, or if you want to get a hold of me and even buy a queen. Uh, Buckfast bees, are, I'm telling you, are the way to go. They are freaking amazing. I've uh, No pest problems, hardly any beetles. As you can tell, when I got into most of my hives, I have no beetle traps whatsoever in any of my hives. Because my high beetles, uh, beetles are usually chased out, if you know, controlled popularly and watched them all the time. I only find maybe a handful of beetles throughout my whole entire hive. And people think that's crazy. They don't believe me on that. But uh, it's because they're very clean. 
and and if you manage their space well, then they'll be fine. They'll be great. Um, but yeah, any questions, comments, leave them below. I'm gonna probably do some more videos for the years over. I just I don't know. It's been crazy. Uh, hunting, deer hunting's coming around the corner in October, so I'll be shooting that, shooting some film there. So if I shoot anything, you'll be able to see it with this head cam. But uh, yeah, so that's gonna do it for today, folks. I might do something more more today. I don't really know. Uh, we'll just have to see. <laughs> have a good one. Hey folks, Corey here again. I also wanted to showcase something here that I made. Uh, it was the first version uh, solar wax melter that I did. Uh, I heard, just kind of did some research on it and threw it together just to see what I could come up with. And I had some scrap and literally this is what I came up with. Um, <laughs> it's really simple. It's basic. Uh, it just cover, it's basically a uh, thick wood, you know, two inch wood, you know, on legs at an angle. Then I have a screen mesh, uh, obviously plexiglass, everything reflective in there. And usually in 70 degree weather, this thing will start to roll, as long as you keep it direct sun. The only thing I wish I had is on a thing so I didn't have to rotate it every day towards the sun. Now, we wonder probably how, once the wax melts down and goes through, how do I get it out? Well, I have this here where there's just enough of a slit where bees can't get in, or bugs or critters. And I have an old hanger splice water here that I can stick in there once it backs up with liquid wax and I'll put a bucket under it with a strainer and it just runs in there. As soon as you get it started it, it just keeps going as long as there's stuff melting up here. Uh, it was really, like I said, that was my first version. I thought I was going to have to make it a whole bunch of times. Uh, this was just thrown together simple. Uh, I was going to do a little bit different. There was going to be a box down here where this was all enclosed. That way I didn't have to plunge it, but uh, this was, like I said, just to see if it would work. And it actually works so good that I haven't had to throw another one together. Uh, it works wonderful for me. I can literally throw this and fill this whole back thing up, and it will run for a month pulling wax out. Uh, I'd probably get 90%, if not more, of the wax, pure wax out of it than I used to do, which was the whole, if you've ever seen my other videos, I... Uh, Boil, did it with water. I would uh, get water boiling, put wax in it, and then pour it in a bucket, let it settle out. Uh, I would only get, if I'd probably get half the wax, maybe. Uh, not very much. With this, uh, I mean, I can't believe how much wax I pulled out. I pulled buckets of wax out of this. Uh, and it was just some scraps I had together that I threw together. You know, we had these from shelves that we had put together, just uh, cut slabs off the end of 8 foot or 10 footers, I can't remember. And uh, I stuck them together. I put some slits here on the sides. So I can hang my frames in there if I need to, and my top bars. I just slide them in the slide, or I, if I need to, I take a screen that's a little longer and stick it in there if I want to adjust the height of what I have in there. But, you know, I made myself options uh, to do what I could with it. That way, I think my camera went off. I don't know. Oh, no, it's still recording. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but that's that. I did a little... Things. Here's the lid, just simple slides on, stays on, or nothing get in there. Um, if you have suggestions on that or you want to know how I did that, I, I could tell you it's basic, but uh, you know, something as simple as that works. You know, you, you don't have to put a lot of time and money into things. Um, it, if it works, it works. You know, uh, it's not just it's like it's just scrapped to me anyway. So, <laughs> another thing also is I got a whole bunch of these Mason Jar B hangers that I started making too, and they're all over the place uh, for the little tiny pollinators because you got to have those too. But uh, after all, uh, have a good one, and I think that's about it for today, so, yep.